Hi everyone, my name is James and I'd like to welcome you to a short presentation about Polylith. Polylith is a new approach to software architecture that has completely transformed how our team builds backend services. It's simplified our architectures, it's improved the quality of our code, it's given us fast feedback loops and a fantastic development experience, all of which has made us even more effective at delivering business value. And if you'll give me a few minutes of your time, I'll explain how Polylith has achieved all of that. But let's start by asking why a new software architecture might be needed in the first place. That's because, as you probably know, building high quality software is hard. But we make it even harder for ourselves by using abstractions that don't clearly communicate our design intentions. You could say that we're building software with toothpicks when we should be building it with Lego. In other words, we're using constructs that are too small, too sharp, and that need glue to stick together. Let me give you an example of what I mean. This Java method checks if a string is blank, but it's imperative constructs, the ifs, the ors, and the for loops, are too low level to clearly describe the solution. Instead, they give us lots of places to prick ourselves with hard to spot bugs. It's like dealing with toothpicks. This method performs the same job, but it's written in a functional style using Java streams. Here, the constructs are at the right level of abstraction to clearly and concisely describe the solution. For those of you who aren't familiar with reading functional code, this algorithm converts the string to characters, and then it checks if all of the characters are white space. Notice how closely the code reflects my description. This shrinks the code model gap, as it's called, and lets us build succinct solutions that clearly communicate our design intentions. It's much more like building with Lego. But just how similar are functions and Lego bricks? Well, both are easy to understand because of their clear and consistent interfaces. Both are composable because they can be connected together in endless combinations. Both are reusable because they don't need to be glued into place. And both are replaceable because they share that common interface. So these four properties give us a building material that is fantastic to build, play, and experiment with. And the tactile nature of this play creates a fast feedback loop, which helps us to build simpler, clearer, and more flexible solutions. So why doesn't this video stop here? Surely if we build all of our software with functions, then everything will be just rainbows and unicorns, right? Unfortunately not. That's because whilst functions are fantastic for building low-level algorithms, they're not well suited for describing high-level architectures. For that, we need high-level abstractions. So here's a hierarchy of common abstractions from lowest to highest. Functions can be encapsulated into objects, which are organized into packages, which are structured into architectural layers, which are deployed as services, which are then connected together into systems. Let's examine each of these abstractions in turn to see how closely they resemble playing with Lego. We've already established that functions are like a bucket of Lego bricks, but what about objects? Unfortunately, coding with objects is closer to building with toothpicks and glue. That's because objects' tight relationship with state makes them sharp and likely to prick us even when we encapsulate that state behind behavior. Plus, objects are too small to describe system-level design decisions, which is why we're forced to glue them into higher-level abstractions, such as patterns and layers. Also, your objects don't understand anything about my objects, which is why we have to write a lot of additional code to glue our two domains together. An inheritance adds even more glue. As the famous quote goes, you wanted a banana, but what you got was a gorilla holding the banana and the rest of the jungle. So objects don't behave much like Lego bricks. But what about packages? Packages, modules, or namespaces, depending on your language, are a place to organize our functions and objects. They're like a set of drawers that help us to quickly find the right bricks. However, in most languages, packages don't offer true encapsulation, so they lack the composability and replaceability of Lego. So what about layers? Layers give code bases a high-level architecture. They can be horizontal, which split the system across presentation, business, and persistence layers, or they can be vertical, which split the system into end-to-end -end feature slices. Or they can be like an onion, which wraps business logic with infrastructure and integration layers. But however you slice them, they're still just an organizational abstraction. Layers are essentially just a guideline for how to isolate and structure our packages and they aren't composable building blocks by themselves. So what about services? Services come close to Lego-like composability because their interfaces make them understandable, reusable, and replaceable. 
However, services have more intrinsic complexity than functions. They need to be deployed and managed. They use complex APIs instead of simple function calls, and they depend upon a complex network infrastructure. One way to picture all of this added complexity is imagining services as Lego bricks, but that are connected via hoses rather than directly via the holes and studs. Each new service that we add to our system increases the number of hoses and the development and deployment costs. Unfortunately, if services are our only system level building block, then we're likely to build lots of them, which is exactly what happens in by the book microservices. Wouldn't it be better if we had a bucket of simple and composable code bricks, which we could connect together without any hoses or glue? That's exactly what Polylith gives us with its core concept, a component. Components fit between services and packages, and they remove the need for layers. They're a truly composable code brick, which exposes a public interface and hides its implementation. Here's a bucket of components from an e-commerce system. There are three main types of components. There are domain components, for example here, address, cart, customer, product, and order. There are infrastructure components here, uh, such as authorization, database, and log. And there are integration components, which manage uh, the connection to third-party systems. Here, we just got one of those uh, payment that's connecting to a payment system. But let's zoom in on one of these components and understand how they're constructed. So a component is just a project folder. That's it. The exact contents of the folder could differ slightly between languages or build tools. But essentially, they're usually going to have a build file, a test folder, and a source folder. The key distinguishing feature of a component is that its source folder is split. And it's split into multiple packages. So one of those packages is for the interface, the public interface of the component. And then one or more of the packages uh, do the private implementation of that publicly exposed functionality. And it's this separation of interface and implementation that gives components their Lego-like superpowers. So components are understandable because they have one responsibility, a descriptive name and an interface that exposes their public functionality. Components are composable because they're just code. They're not instantiated and they depend on each other via their interfaces. Components are reusable because their code lives in one place, but can be reused and accessed across an entire system. Components are replaceable because we can create multiple implementations of the same interface and then swap them without any other parts of the system noticing. So when we construct a service out of components, it's like having a bucket full of Lego bricks to play with. Our goal is to create a set of components that fulfill the functionality that we've exposed in our services API. In this example, we've created a single e-commerce service by combining every component from our bucket into a single artifact. We expose the service's functionality via an API in the shop API base. You can think of a base as a special kind of component, which exposes an API of endpoints instead of an interface of functions. Fulfilling all of our system requirements with one service is usually the simplest solution. But maybe we have non-functional requirements, such as scalability, where we're forced to deploy multiple services. The modularity of Polylith's components make it easy to create new services. We simply select a subset of components from the bucket and delegate to them via a new base. In this example, we've extracted the customer-related components and created a customer API base, giving us a two-service system and reusing all of the infrastructure components at zero cost. So to summarize, Polylith gives us components. And components are service level building blocks that are understandable, composable, reusable, and replaceable. Components are easy to reason about and develop with because they're just code and they don't need to be instantiated. They have a clear interface and they hide their implementation. Components can be reused across multiple services, making code duplication a thing of the past. Components have a low creation and maintenance cost which encourages us towards modular designs with many single responsibility components. Component single bucket of bricks development environment gives us an incredible development experience. We get all the benefits of coding with a monolith, such as code navigation, refactoring, debugging, and a single REPL, if your language has a REPL, uh, but also the flexibility of deploying our components into any combination of services. In short, Polylith makes building systems and services more like playing with Lego and less like gluing together toothpicks. Its simplicity and power brings a level of speed, fun, and collaboration to software development that I had never come across before. 
and I can highly recommend it. If you're interested to find out more about Polylith, then check out the documentation, which I've linked to in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.